From the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCrady. I deserve to be on TV. To this edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast, Chase Parm, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio. This morning, couple guests coming to you in a uh, an interview packed edition of the show. David Delucci, former Ole Miss All American, you know that. Now with the SEC Network, is going to join us. We're going to talk SEC baseball, Ole Miss baseball, a couple specific players on the Ole Miss team, and then what's going on with David as well this weekend and beyond. So we'll talk to him, and then we'll have our normal conversation with Jeffrey Wright on this Thursday, where we will. Uh, Talk uh, getting older, getting old, and uh, and more with him as uh, well. You know, thirty will sneak up and bite you, Neil. That's what I what I hear. So um, yeah, it, it, Neil shook his head this entire interview as we were talking. And and now that it's it's been thirty minutes, I'm I'm still. Uh, you know me, I'm not easily offended. In fact, I'm never offended. This is as close as I've gotten to being offended. When in we a long speak time. ill of thirty, yeah, I mean the aches and the pains associated with thirty. Yeah, I, I just – I can't believe I sat and participated. I, it it shows you just how – I don't think it's tolerant. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's completely checked out. Maybe it's I, – I, I can't remember the last time someone offended me. Really? Yeah, I, I, I just don't get offended by anything. You're offended by stupidity and lack of common sense. Maybe it's not personal offense, yeah. but, but you're offended – you're actually very often offended by the world at large, yeah, just the, the society in general. If but you not will. personally offended. Like I can't remember the last time I was like, "God, that that hurt." Yeah, we'll get on this in a second. First today's podcast brought to you every single day by the Oxford Exxon Blue Sky there on Highway Six West in Oxford. You know, you get forty-five cent bottomless refills from the Oxford Exxon. Last chance at Swayze prior to the uh, potential postseason. We'll see as games play out. To get one of those stadium cups as they entertain Mississippi State this weekend, 49 cents, keeping your car refilled there. Also save money at the pump with the Speed Pass Plus app, the mobile rewards program, and much more. That's the Oxford Exxon Blue Sky on Highway 6. And, again, maybe you're getting there from a vehicle from Clark Ford. I hope so. Clark Ford's in Amory, Mississippi. 662-257-1900 is the number. Uh, call that number and uh, ask for Corey Clark and tell Corey what. Uh, board you're looking for he'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours uh here's the deal Corey wants to be a car guy he wants to be a truck guy i, I drive a clark ford f-150 Corey called me yesterday uh unsolicited out of the blue to let me know about something and it, as it pertained to my uh my f-150 just giving me a heads up on something i don't know how many car dealers truck dealers do that for you Corey does he wants you to be very satisfied with your purchase Obviously, because that means you come back, which I've done, and many of you will do as well. So give them a call. At least get a quote. Go from there, 662-257-1900. At the end of your deal, tell Corey that you heard about Clark Ford on the podcast. You'll save $500 off your already great bottom line. And I know before we get into it, a lot of people want a uh, a weather update. Here's the latest from the National Weather Service. Uh, Today is a 100% chance of rain, and they nailed it because it's raining. Uh, they changed the forecast a little for tomorrow. I don't know that it's significantly better, but it's a little better. Uh, thunderstorms in the morning and then uh, developing later in the day. Chance of rain 80% tomorrow. Tomorrow night, cloudy with occasional rain showers. Thunder is possible. Okay. A low of 61. Chance of rain 60%. So not ideal, but better than earlier in the week. Sure. Saturday, scattered thunderstorms in the morning, becoming more widespread in the afternoon, a high of 71, locally heavy rainfall possible, chance of rain 80%. Saturday night, thunderstorms, low of 57, chance of rain 90%. So we're not playing Saturday. Uh, Saturday doesn't sound good. And then Sunday, and this is the doubleheader-y type of thing, mostly cloudy skies early will become partly cloudy later in the day. Sunday's better. And then Sunday night, a mostly clear sky, yeah, lower 53. We're going to play a game Friday, and we're going to play two games Sunday. 
That's my guess. Uh, I will tell you that uh, tickets are available at OleMissTix.com, general admission tickets. That's OleMissTix.com. The scheduled starts are 6, 30, 6, and noon. Mother we'll Na- see. Mother Nature probably uh, intends to have her say in, in some of those scheduled starts, but uh, – that's I'll leave that between Ole Miss and Mother Nature. I'll just tell you that tickets are available at OleMissTix.com. There's some uh, literary fun in the fact that Ole Miss's host season may come down to a couple seven inning games on a Sunday. All right, against Mississippi State. Tell me this. Yeah, and I hate doing this. God, uh-huh. I don't like being this guy. Why? Given the fact that there's no reason for them to get back so quickly because they not play two nine inning games. <laughs> Look, they may give some waivers. I don't know, but. They're just weird about waivers. They don't like waivers. They're they're really good about extending travel curfews, but they're not real good about, hey, just play some nine-inning games. And I think some of and now this is dumb, and it makes no sense to me, and maybe if, if whomever's listening, Chuck Dunlap or whoever's doing stuff over there now, it's yeah, crazy. Maybe whatever, Ben Beatty, I don't know, whoever it is. Yeah. Point being, maybe they say it's nuts. Maybe there's like some competitive advantage thing where if I make everybody else play seven inning games and I let you play nine inning games or something along those lines. I yeah. I, I don't know. It's just a theory, but I have it's a possible. lot of theories. Um, because the smart thing, if you wake up Saturday morning and the weather looks like hell, is to go, hey, let's not sit here all day. Let's yeah. play two nine inning games tomorrow when the weather's going to work out. We'll yeah. play one at noon. I mean, State's graduation was a week ago. Ole Miss's is on Saturday. From a student athlete, I'm using air quotes, standpoint, (laughs) there is nothing going on. Well, in fact, by not playing until Sunday, you let the graduating student athlete enjoy their day and spend time with their family. Now you're playing a doubleheader on Mother's Day, so you hate mothers when you do this. Yeah. Always a bad crowd on Mother's Day. One of the worst crowds of the year. Yeah. (sighs) What? I'm I'm very fortunate as it pertains to Mother's Day. I I, I said to my wife, "So what do you want?" Oh, and she said, "You know, I just want some plants for around the pool." And I said, "Okay, I'll go get them." And she goes, "We'll just go get them Saturday." I said, "Awesome." Okay. And uh, with that, we were done with Mother's Day. Couple uh, things before we move on to David in a second. Um, first, uh, congratulations to Miss Women's Golf Team. As you know, we talked to Macy Smosky on the podcast a couple weeks ago. Corey Hinkus and uh, them, they advanced to the national championships. They finished sixth in the Norman, Oklahoma Regional. They were down a shot with a couple holes to go. They end up overtaking Texas Tech and finish sixth, so they move on to the national championships at the Blessings course in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So they uh, so how many for the second year in a row. How many teams will be in Fayetteville? I think there will be 18 or 24. I don't know how many regionals there are. Gotcha. They, they took the top six from each regional, gotcha. so I don't know how many regionals there are, but uh, something like that. And then they took like the three individuals on, not on advancing teams. Is there a lot of good golf in Fayetteville? Not that it matters to me. I'm the Blessings curious. course is really, really good. Okay. Um, Stacy Lewis, one of the top LPGA players, is from Arkansas. Okay. Um, Little Rock has the Elotion, a really good course yeah. there. Um, but yeah, gotcha. But apparently, yeah, the Blessings is really nice. Texas, Florida, Wake Forest, Purdue, Arizona State, and Ole Miss advance out of the Norman Oklahoma Regional. Host Oklahoma finishes eighth and does Ooh. not advance out of Ooh. the Norman Oklahoma Regional. Going to be running some bleachers today. Well, I mean, you get the thing on your home course and you finish eight. That's not a good situation. That's a bad sign. That's not a good sign. Yeah. That coach probably. He's you know, fired. She's fired. It's fired. Um, congratulations to them. I guess they had a great conference season. But um, some of these automatic bid scores always crack me up. Uh, fairly Dickinson, 99 over. For the fairly tournament. bad. Yeah, fairly bad. <laughs> fairly bad. It'd be a good headline if you were locally. Uh, fairly bad. So, 99 yeah. over? It's over three days. It's four players, but yeah. They, uh, Damn. They shot 963, 99 over. Ole Miss. Uh, I mean, I didn't even shoot 99 over. Ole Miss shot 871. Fairly Dickinson shot 963. Wow. Yeah. Texas won it at 855. So there's that. Also, I've been getting a lot of feedback the last two days. Tons of Mississippians have had to label a map with the counties growing up. I'm actually the odd one that did not, that I remember. And maybe I'm forgetting. They had to label it, and even some of them had to label the county seat oh of every county God. as well. What a useless endeavor. <laughs> yeah, not just the county, the county seat. 
That's horrific. I, I want to thank everyone at the following schools. Hillcrest Elementary, I.A. Lewis Elementary, Glenview Junior High School, and Ruston High School for not making that a requirement of me. Thank you. Um, in case I, to all of the teachers still alive and, and who have passed on, thank you so very much for not making that a part of my academic requirement. I learned the states and the capitals. And I was good with that. Well, you should have focused more on local government, apparently. We took Louisiana history, but I, we you never. Talked about the purchase? Yeah. You we, talked about the purchase? We talked about the purchase. Did you? Big part of Louisiana's history was the purchase. Okay. Um, <laughs> Learned about the you know the French influence, the Creole it influence. It was a ton of land. Why was it the Louisiana Purchase? Why was it not something else Purchase? Uh, it seems like that was taught to me. Um, you know. Well, I'm asking a Louisiana native. So I'm when you drive to Little Rock, uh, you pass by the the land where the Here. negotiation was settled. Really? Yes. So it should have been the Arkansas Purchase. Technically, sounds like a real bad PR team for the state of Arkansas. They did a crappy job. Because you always, hey, I mean, somebody who doesn't even really know much about the states, hey, we know about Louisiana, or the Louisiana Purchase. Yeah. That New Orleans is fun. That's what, I mean. That's about right. Of, yeah. yeah. It's a different world down there. Yeah. yeah. Correct. I don't know. Anyway. So, I, yeah, it was just, anyway, we we never had to learn all the, all the parishes or parish seats, thank God. Yeah, parish Ooh, seats. You talk about, I mean, I feel like, seriously, you talk about feeling old. I feel young having dodged that bullet. That would have been rough. Having to spell all those names down there. Oh, I didn't think about the spelling. Yeah, you get into like Vucare and Opelousas and Beauregard and Thibodeau. And... Whew. I was from Ruston. I was in Lincoln Parish. We kept things simple. Well, it's like in Mississippi, you know, you pronounce it Sugarlock, but it's like S-H-U-Q-U-A-L-A-K. Yeah, but it's that's Sugarlock. Just, that's wrong. Oh, thank God. My kids have avoided that so far. The Mississippi stuff? Yeah. Campbell went all the Campbell Oh, no, graduated. Campbell didn't take Mississippi history? That's no. not a thing anymore? No, and her last day of high school. Are you was, sure? I'm positive. She might have taken it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She had to take Mississippi history. She might have taken it, but she never had to learn all the counties. Really? No. Seems like I would have been involved in that memorization. <laughs> you got pulled into that? Yeah, that would have been my category. Um, Actually, I got, a t I got something at 808 this morning. I'll leave the name out, even though I know he doesn't care. In Mississippi Studies, a required class for ninth graders at Oxford High, you do have to label every county in Mississippi on a map. At 8.08 this morning. I'm about to find out if Campbell's here. <laughs> <laughs> you think you would have gotten brought into this if it was a thing? I'm thinking. I'm finding out if she's home. Okay. I know she got up and went to kickboxing today. I don't know whether she has classes today or not. Her senior year's been a complete joke. Not a lot of class. <laughs> Are we getting her down here? If she yeah, is, she's responding. I got the bubbles going. Okay, let's see. That's a really quick response for a for a kid and a parent. Some kudos. We have, we have a pretty good relationship. Okay. Is she home? Yeah, she's home. You want to bring her down? Yeah, I'm gonna get her. Come, come down. Here, real quick. Yeah. I know it's bad pod. It's fine. Uh, there's a mailbag up at rebelgrove.com when we're waiting on Neil's oldest daughter. She's uh, on her way down. Okay. Uh, there's a mailbag. I've got some baseball mailbag stuff I'll throw up later today as well. Ole Miss, Mississippi State. Um, also, I can hear footsteps. Yeah. She was getting dressed. She was getting ready to go to school. Okay. Hello, Campbell. Come here real quick. I need a, just a quick interview here on the podcast. It's going to be very, very fast. You, uh, you're graduating from Oxford High School later this month. You took Mississippi history your freshman year. Is that correct? Yes. Did you? At Wait, no, no, let's, let's do it a different way. Yeah. Kip, what do you remember about having to learn the counties in Mississippi? Um, I don't really remember that at all, to be honest. So you don't remember having to label every county? No. See, I told you I would have. Well, I don't know. I'm just reading Twitter. No, no, no. I would have gotten. I would have gotten uh, pulled into that. I, I know how the the study aid. Do you know how many counties there are in Mississippi? <laughs> no. How many could you label on a map? You think if I handed you a map right now? Uh, one. 
We'll say it. Oh, you could do better than that. <laughs> you would know Yalabusha and Panola. Oh, my God. Yes, you would. You would know the counties that are contiguous to you. No, I wouldn't. That's pitiful. That's just awful. You know, we we got to start teaching these damn counties better. Can you do a woo pig suey before we leave? Woo pig suey. All right, thank you. That's really All good. Right. Thanks, good. Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> do you know the capital of Wyoming? Oh, this this, this might be like it, like. You learned your U.S. capital. Oh, no. God. Cheyenne. What's the capital of Idaho? Are you feel, embarrassed right now? I just Mel? feel like I've sort of failed as a father. Are you embarrassed? No. No. A little? No. Here's Are you surprised here, though? A little surprised we don't know our capitals as much as we play the capital joke around game. Um, you know, I bet I bet Wyoming is one of the ones that gets wrong some. I bet tons of people say Laramie. Probably I so. I bet that's one of the most screwed up ones. I don't know why I always did really well with – I did really well with two things in I mean, school. I might not get them all right, but I would get a lot right. I did really well with capitals, learning them quickly. And then in the fourth grade, you had to pass the timed multiplication test three times in a row. You had to get them all right within three minutes before you could go play on the playground. Okay. And there were several days in the fourth grade where when everyone else had to take the test – I was out at the playground. Multiplication tables. I nailed it. Boom, See, boom, I only boom. nearly knew sevens because of touchdowns. <laughs> uh, I could do that, but that was kind of it. Yeah. Um, everything else was a struggle. For whatever reason, simple simple calculation was always easy for me, and I I, I blew through that. And okay. on the capitals, I went. I passed the capital test. Uh, that was in the fifth grade. I passed the Capitals test the very first day and got to go hang out on the playground. We had a song, too, in about fifth grade where we had to learn these states in alphabetical order, and we had a song that helped. It was like Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut. Like Play the hits. That yeah. that, that that was never a way for me to I, – I never did well learning like that. I just yeah. learned the damn stuff. Okay. Just throwing it out there. I'm really confused by this Oxford High School thing, though. Did we just drop it in the last couple of years, maybe? Potentially. I mean, she she did not. I, I, I'm i telling you, I would have been brought into that. I don't think that. she lied. No, I would have been brought into that. I got another one that says North Pontotoc High School, as of 2015, had to learn all 82 counties and write them on a map. Oh, my God. So this is, this is a new occurrence, or she either skipped that week, one or the other. Because that's the kind of thing that would have stressed Laura out. And would have brought me. So it would have yeah. the house would have been involved with this. Yeah, I would have been the one that had to get that done. Okay, well, going to go to David in one second. But I'll tell you about G and M Pharmacy there in Oxford. It's on South Lamar. They deliver local to your home or workplace. They offer MedSync to make sure you're taking the medicine when you need to take it. And tons of people taking CBD oil for a number of different issues. It's a, it can improve your overall health. Helps regulate many conditions such as depression, anxiety, pain, insomnia, and more. I know multiple buddies who have stopped traditional medication because of CBD. You can uh, find out more about that. You can stop in on South Lamar. Give them a call at 662-236-2222 for more information. And while you're in there, go ahead and move those prescriptions over as well. Don't have to stay with the big box pharmacies. Go to GNM where they'll know you. You can trust them, and they'll take care of you. Again, 662-236-2222. This would actually be a really good gift for Mother's Day. It's also a perfect gift for the graduate. You can send your graduate into the world with a great pair of jeans that will look sharp and last the Blue Delta Jeans store will be open uh, today, tomorrow, and Saturday from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. But feel free to contact them for a private fitting. It's uh, Blue Delta Jeans at, I'm sorry, info at bluedeltajeans.com. I-N-F-O at bluedeltajeans.com. You can also slide into their DMs on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, Blue Delta Jeans will be set up in the graduate lobby on Friday from 4 until 8. Anyone is welcome to come see them, share a drink, get a fitting. And if you present your graduate room key, maybe you're coming up for uh, graduation, you're coming up for the baseball series, or both, um, show them your graduate room key. It's $100 off your uh, Blue Delta jeans purchase. So that's a really, uh, really good deal. Again, that's Friday at the graduate lobby from 4 to 8. They have a bar right there in the lobby. They have a bar upstairs. Um it's pretty cool. So check it out, and if you are staying at the graduate, just show them your room key. Save a hundred bucks um, off your new jeans from Blue Delta Jeans. Uh, let's see, 
guests will join us. Uh, Jeffrey Wright's going to join us. David DeLucci's going to join us. They're going to join us on the Patterson and Earhart Hotline. Patterson and Earhart Attorneys at Law specialize in personal injury law and real estate law, but theirs is a general practice that can handle any of your legal needs. When you contact Patterson and Earhart, you speak to one of the partners in the firm. That's who handles your case, not some paralegal at a faceless corporate firm. Listen, just you can benefit by being a listener of our podcast. If you think you have a legal issue, if you if you know you have a legal issue, if you're not sure what to do about a potential legal issue, and you just want to talk to somebody, but you don't necessarily want to get all committed just yet, take advantage of this relationship that we have. Get in touch with John Calvin Patterson and or Wes Earhart contact them they're going to be back on the phone with you within the same day guaranteed uh that initial consultation is free 662-526-1992 or check out their website pelaws.com podcast also brought to you by pinnacle trust pinnacle trust based in madison mississippi it has uh clients in more than 20 states advisors in three what they do is they provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much more. They treat investing like a commodity. Decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. So regardless of your level of wealth, the Pinnacle Trust sits down with you. They listen to your goals, your dreams. They study your expenses. And they put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan that's built just for you. Pintrust.com. P-I-N-N Trust dot com. Podcast also brought to you by the Weston Jackson. They're the sponsors of my mailbag, which is up uh, complete with lots of questions from Ben Craddock, including a trick question that I did not fall for. Um, it's all there at rebelgrove.com, which is part of the Rivals Network. You should subscribe, become part of the community. It's cheaper than, a, uh, frankly, cheaper than a lunch damn near anywhere. So, uh, it's except Oxford Exxon. Except the Oxford Exxon, where you can get a lunch cheaper than that. You could get two lunches at the Oxford Almost. Exxon. Yeah. Anyway. 64 ounces of beverage. I feel like I'm competing against myself right now. It's uh, My mailbag is brought to you by the Weston Jackson. Uh, you can stop at the Weston Jackson and visit Soul Spa. It's the ultimate luxury spa experience in downtown Jackson. And you can stop by Estelle Wine Bar and Bistro. Sip on a creative craft cocktail, enjoy their curated wine list, and enjoy Chef Caden's many offerings. It's open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. So gather at Estelle in the Weston Jackson tonight. Now we will go to David DeLucci on the Patterson and Earhart hotline. Dave, uh, thanks to uh, you for spending some time with us this morning. I know you're coming in town this weekend. I hear you're, uh, you're, you're cap and gowning on Saturday. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's an exciting weekend for me, and um, I I have reached the pinnacle of of my educational career at at Ole Miss, and I, I get to walk across that stage and and uh, finally earn a degree after quite a few years of uh, of um, being away from school. Uh, but finally, I, I stuck with it, and uh, that was one of my goals. Or I, I step foot on campus and I finally get to uh, to reach it. At, at, at what point did that kind of become a focus of hey, let's 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 finish this, let's kind of you know take care of this part of my life a little bit and go ahead and get that done? It was kind of always a, a goal of mine, and um, and I mean that's kind of like you know what I was expected to do in my family, and that's why you start kindergarten is to work your way and, and finish uh, all the levels of schooling. And then when I signed to play professional ball, my late grandfather, who was a a very large role model in my life, um, asked me to, to, to make it a point to, to get my degree, no matter what, this is way before I I ever um, had the opportunity to play in, in the major leagues and he passed away. And so I always wanted to keep the promise to him that I would get my degree no matter what. And, um, and so the part, part of this is fulfilling my commitment to Ole Miss, and the other part is fulfilling the promise that I made to my late grandfather. Get into get into some baseball. You're you're better than me if you can completely explain this Ole Miss team. They've uh, been all over the place. They beat a lot of good teams. They've lost some maybe some series they're supposed to win, but they're sitting here at fifteen and nine with six to go. What are sort of some overall thoughts on on this group as we get close to postseason play? 
I think this is a very, very good Ole Miss team. I think they have a fantastic offense, and um, it has been a, a season of, of a lot of head scratching. And um, and I think this is a team um, for for the most part that uh, I, I look at it as if they're a uh, they're a lion that has been um, playing with their prey. Uh, I think that they can step it up when they need to. They've they've shown that. Uh, the comeback against LSU late in the game was was a perfect example of that. When when they need to to score runs, when they need to bear down and, and get the job done, they can do it. Uh, they've lost some midweek games that you sit there and go, man, this you know would happen here. And and, and I think sometimes uh, we forget that they're they're twenty year old college ball players and it's not that easy to keep your focus when you have a a big sec weekend looming um behind a midweek game uh, and i think sometimes they've been distracted a little bit but at this point of the season uh, this is when you bear down and this is when you can you can finally tune your concentration to the series at hand and there's no bigger series than the one coming up this weekend. And really this series and last weekend with LSU, they were the two series that, that could make or break Ole Miss season. They had to win that series in, in Baton Rouge to stay in the contention to host a regional. Uh, this is a series. Now they've set themselves up nicely to be able to take on the, the team with a very similar SEC conference record. And there'll be major implications from this series if they win this as well. So uh, I expect the team to stay focused. I expect for us to see their best baseball uh, being played from this weekend on into the SEC tournament and then forward from there. What's kind of going through your head as you either saw or following or whatever that ninth inning in Baton Rouge, and then even more than that and how crazy it was the way Ole Miss was able to respond immediately in the tenth? Because I thought, you know, when we look back, that might be the half inning that we that we focus on that was a, the heck of a turning point for them. Yeah, I was um, I was in the studio at the SEC Network, and they were, you know, I, I had to catch myself. I was yelling at the TV set um, while the game was going on, and and it was it was it was – a, an incredible game uh, played by both teams. But one of the things I took away from that game most of all is, is well, two things. One is Ole Miss's ability to, to, to come back and not lay down and not, um, not uh, you, you know, get down on themselves and end up uh, with the momentum shift that LSU had, allowing it to get away from them. That's huge. That right there is something that you take forward. Uh, because that that's going to come up again in in the uh, in the SEC tournament in the next coming weeks and in the postseason, you can you can learn off of that and you can develop confidence off of that. Uh, the second thing that was really concerning to me, and I hope this team learns the lesson, is there were two errors in that game that were on routine plays that allowed LSU to stay in the ball game, which gave them confidence to be able to make that comeback. And it was a drop ball in right field, and it was a routine double play ball at second base. Now, had had the, the outfield ball been caught, Gunnar Hoagland probably could have stayed in the game a, a, a little bit longer, which would have helped the bullpen. And uh, it would have basically cut the throats of LSU because at that point Ole Miss was run, about to run away with the game. And the missed double play ball, uh, allowed LSU to really go back in the dugout and say we're in this ball game and we can win this thing. Let's keep on plugging away. We overlook the small things in the game uh, that that on the mental side allows a team to stay in the end of the ball game and 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 continue to chip away to get to the point where they almost won the game. And uh, and at the end of the game, when you look back and go, what, what was it, what were the things that we needed to, to improve on? More often than not, it's the errors or the walks that you go back and go, man, I wish we would or would not have done this. And those are very, very important learning lessons that, that as a team that has Omaha potential, you take with you and go, we have got to stop this. We have got to stop our own errors. We have got to stop putting people on base. And if Ole Miss can do that with the offense that they have and with the back of the bullpen that they have, 
uh, they have the potential to win the national championship this year. You know, you mentioned Mississippi State, the tough weekends they've had. A lot of that's come to some defensive inconsistency as well, especially uh, against LSU when they played them in Starkville. What's kind of what, what are you kind of looking at in this uh, in this series? What are the couple things that the fans maybe should focus on that's going to turn this one way or the other between the Bulldogs and the Rebels? I think what what uh, what you look at when you look at this this series is you look at a Mississippi State team that is expecting to go back to Omaha. They had a magical run last year. They came out of nowhere. Uh, from from the start of the season and then the end of the season because State needed a a very very strong finish um, to to be considered uh, a, a post to have a postseason chance and they did it and they carried that over with them into the SEC tournament into the regionals into the super regionals with which vaulted them into the College World Series so that's a team that expects to go back to the College World Series. When you have a team that is playing with expectations like that, they're hard to beat. And Ole Miss is trying to get to where State was last year. So this is a fantastic opportunity. Because Ole Miss is capable of winning this series, because they have the talent, because they have the players, and because they have the momentum, it's kind of a clash of the Titans. Um, And if Ole Miss pulls this series off, then – they will take the confidence that Mississippi State had last year, and you may see an opportunity for them to carry it on even further. Ole Miss relies heavily on Jake Mangum. He's the heart and soul of the team, and they rely heavily on uh, a supporting cast that is really, really good behind Jake Mangum, who's the table setter. They've got outstanding pitching from top to bottom in the beginning and the end of their rotation and in their bullpen. It's one of the more complete teams uh, in the nation that has played an elite level all year long so as a competitor i look at myself as a competitor this is the team that you want to play to prove that you belong uh in the hunt for uh, a bid to omaha so uh it's not going to be easy but it's at your home field there's going to be a lot of fans and uh, all eyes are going to be on the series Ole Miss obviously finishes up next weekend at Tennessee, a series that the Vols have been excellent in non-conference. They've struggled a little in the conference play. Still have a top-10 RPI, just obviously having to follow the entire league. What are kind of a couple impressions on Tennessee? Because they uh, they seem to have fallen off just a touch lately from where they were earlier in the season. Yeah, early in the season they were they were um, incredibly successful, and it was based off of a of – a, a, very, very good pitching staff that I, I still believe at this point uh, they were, and I think they are now leading the nation in complete game shutouts. If I'm not mistaken, they're probably still up there. If they're not number one, they're, they're, they're very close. So it's a very, very strong starting pitching staff that can go deep in the ball games, and they've got a good, good uh, back end of the bullpen. Um, they've, they've been able to have success with a young team that doesn't hit the ball out of the park a whole lot. They're not going to score a bunch of runs. They're just going to win close games. Um, as of late, the SEC uh, schedule has taken its toll on them, which it does on every single team. The SEC um, gauntlet is usually the equalizer for a lot of these teams. So it's not fair to judge a team based on what they do in the early part of the season. And we've seen Tennessee kind of, of uh, get banged up a little bit Um because of the strong offenses that they faced. And Ole Miss's offense is no different than Arkansas and and some of the Bandy teams. They have potential to put big runs on the board and uh, and have big innings. Uh, But this is another, much like the Mississippi State team, this is another very, very good pitching staff um, that Ole Miss has to be ready for because they they make very few mistakes uh, in the field. And uh, and these are power-quality arms. So it's another... It's another uh, test that if you make it through the state series and you make it through the Tennessee series, really uh, very, very few pitching staffs in the nation that can compare to those two teams. So it's a confidence builder. It's an RPI builder. It's a resume builder. And Ole Miss cannot sleep on that series either. This is not the Tennessee team that you're used to seeing in the years past. 
obviously, Greg Kessinger's having an All-SEC Player of the Year type of season. They're getting tons from Zabowski. Keenan's gotten hot, a lot of those guys. But it's hard to think they're going to go a, a really long way in the postseason without Thomas Dewar performing. From what you've been able to see, do you see anything that's kind of prohibited, prohibited him from having a lot of success lately? He's been a bit of a skid for the past month. What, a, what, what, what do you see from his approach or his, his hitting standpoint? I just think I think that um, the, the book is out on how to pitch players. And, um, and, and it, it is, it, it is against SEC teams that can, can hit their spots and, um, and you don't get that in any other conference in midweek games. So by this point in the season, everybody knows what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and that's what they focus on. And they're going to keep on giving it to you. It's up to the players behind Dillard to carry the load. And, and when you have hitters behind Dillard that are absolutely crushing the ball, which we saw early in the season, they're going to have to pitch to Dillard. They're going to have to give him pitches to hit. So it's, um, it's, a, whole, it's a whole offense from top to bottom that can help Dillard uh, get back on track. But, but, look, we saw him hit the home run at Ole Miss. It was on a very good pitch, a good location. He wasn't thinking uh, to lift the ball and try to get it out of the ballpark, and look what he did. He hit a ball that was 390 feet on a line I think he's capable of doing it and maybe that swing right there took him out of the thought process of man I need to try to hit home runs for this this team to be successful to I need to just drive the ball and a lot of those balls are going to go out of the ballpark so he's a switch hitter so you can't do a matchup against him which helps him out a lot and uh and he's a veteran guy now that I have seen him stick with a very successful approach and I think he's going to keep doing that so he'll, he'll, his bat will come come along nicely um, we saw that it came out when Ole Miss needed it I think we'll see a lot more of that in the future are you surprised Cooper is not getting a little more draft buzz at this point uh, I, I, I man it, it, Cooper Johnson is one of the best defensive catchers in, in the game and we live in, a, in an era right now where everybody's stuck on on offense and they're stuck on home runs. That's what the big leagues are doing, and I think that's what everybody is looking for. Uh, Cooper is going – I think he's – wherever he goes, whatever team gets him is going to be very pleased because he is a major league baseball player. His defense is there. You don't have to worry about that. And when you draft a catcher, that's one of the things that, that they want is they want a catcher that can manage the game manage a pitching staff, and, and can, can hold a running game down. Cooper does all of that, and his offense is a bonus. Uh, you know, it, it's sad to me that he doesn't get credit for what he does offensively because I know the skills are there. He just hasn't had the opportunity to work on it because he's so concerned with to run in the pitching staff and, and be in the anchor of the defense. Um, there are a lot of overlooked players. Paul Goldschmidt comes to mind to me there that was overlooked in the draft and look at what he's turned into. And I think Cooper Johnson uh, is going to be a guy that, that whoever gets him is going to be very pleased and he's going to play a long major league career. Last thing, how's it, uh, how's it going for you with the network? Get a little more comfortable, I, I guess, now in, in, you know, in, in another year, not in your, your initial year. The last time we talked about it is, uh, is it starting to kind of become a little bit of routine and old hat for you? It's, uh, I'm in year two, and um, uh, I've, I've learned an awful lot in year one, so I'm much more comfortable being in the studio and what the schedule is like. I'm much more comfortable um, traveling, and, uh, and I get to do a handful of games, um, which I love. I love announcing games and being around the game and talking to players and coaches. Uh, I'm enjoying it, man. It's so much fun. I love the SEC. Uh, I love Ole Miss. I love getting an opportunity to talk about them and promote them as best as I can. And uh, I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. This all started because I was asked to, to go help out when the SEC Plus Network came in and Ole Miss was looking for a color guy for those games. And, and it opened up doors to be where I'm at right now. And, and college baseball is thriving. It's the best it's ever been. Uh, it's the most popular it's ever been, and I'm going to try my darndest to continue that and make sure that uh, everyone uh, really that, that are not already on the college baseball bandwagon jumps on and we promote the sport and get it even more popular, and, and I think it will help. 
you know, projecting college baseball into every household in the future, getting every kid out playing wiffle ball and high school baseball and college baseball. And uh, it's just an awesome sport, man. I get to be around it. And you know what? I get paid to do it, man. I mean, it's that's a bonus for me. I appreciate it, bud. If we uh, don't see each other this weekend, let's get together in Hoover. I thank you. Sounds great. Love being on, on your podcast. Thanks for having me. Right, thanks, Dave. Thanks to David for joining us today. He's got a busy weekend. Again, congrats to him on uh, completing his degree, walking on Saturday at Ole Miss. We'll also tell you about Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and Chattanooga. Underwriting and processing is done in Memphis. You're getting local underwriting and understand your market, a leader in condo financing in Oxford, and the float down option. So you can lock in the current rate, but if rates go down before you close, they just give you the lower rate, 662-234-2704 or J-L-O-W-E at communitymtg.com. Podcast also brought to you by John Edwards of Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. If you've been thinking about that golf trip with the guys or maybe that anniversary trip, she'll never forget uh, whether you've dreamed of playing St. Andrews or sitting at a cafe in Paris. Talk to John Edwards before you try to do it yourself. He's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows John to supply his clients with added values and unique benefits that are simply not available to other travelers. John traveled the globe for 37 years before he got into the travel business, so he knows the extra attention that is needed to make a special trip one that creates a lifetime of unique memories. Give him a call, give him some parameters and a budget, and at least give give him an opportunity to give you some options, options you won't find on your own, and no, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or send him an email, Edwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients can save $50 off their first booked trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. It's a podcast that's also sponsored by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, that's the place to go. They have a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. If they don't have it in, they'll get it in for you. Uh, They also have great lease deals as well, great service after the sale. Um, Gene and Sandy Grass have been friends of this podcast and this website for a long time, really since I've been here, so uh, they've been great to me. They've been great to a lot of our customers. They'll be great to you as well. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. And we're brought to you by Harry Alexander. Harry is an Oxford-based REMAX Legacy Realty agent. Um, he's a big part of Savannah Square. It's a new nine-acre development, seven-tenths of a mile from the Oxford downtown square, conveniently located east of North Lamar, just a short stroll from the Midtown Shopping Center. If you're coming up for the weekend, uh, maybe you're coming up for the baseball games. You might have some time to kill, and you might be thinking about, uh, you know, making Oxford a home, a second home, a uh, retirement home, whatever the case may be. Uh, you kind of owe it to yourself to check out Savannah Square, and uh, Harry will help you do that. It's The model home is available for your inspection, 215 William Street. So give Harry a call uh, at 662-801-5621. Uh, you can check out savannasquareoxford.com. Get more information about this great new development while units are still available. Now let's jump back to the uh, phones, and we'll talk to Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey, good morning. Did you uh, did you stay up for all of Rockets Warriors last night? Are you tired? How how, how we feeling, bud? Well, I do four hours of radio at, at, at this present time every single day, so I have to stay up and talk about something. So I stayed up. I watched. I watched the whole thing. Um, I'm tired, but not really from last night. I'm more tired from the night before. It was just one of those nights where I don't know why I didn't go to sleep. I think it's a vicious cycle of drinking Red Bull. I'm, I've turned into Ed Orgeron. I drink Red Bull and I don't sugar free or, or leaded. Uh, oh, I'm unleaded. Come on, dude. Okay. No aspartame. I don't. I don't need the aftertaste. Uh, it's gotten so bad that I now like the taste of Red Bull. I no longer I no longer drink a Red Bull and think, "Hey, where's the vodka?" I now I now like actually enjoy it. Were you a it's Red Bull a vodka good, guy? It's not a good place to be. Do what? Were you a Red Bull vodka guy? I mean, every guy when he goes to the bar and he's less than 100% becomes a Red Bull vodka guy just because you're convinced that uh basically uh you're kind of scared of cocaine, but Red Bull vodka seems to have the exact same effects, so that'll at least keep you up through midnight. It's an upper and a downer, though. It just all it just screws you up. It just sends you everywhere all at one time. 
yeah, basically, it's 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 legitimately destroying your brain. Like, there, no, there's nothing that can be good about that at all. I've never had one. Yeah, you're, you, you, I mean, I, I I mean this just in pragmatic purposes. You're too old. It wasn't a thing yeah. in college. as is it come through? Because uh, I, I caught the, I caught kind of height of that too. Shouldn't be a thing too. for anyone. Well, let's, it shouldn't be a let's, thing. Let's no. be clear. It tastes like lighter fluid. Um, it does give you this really weird sensation where you're loaded with caffeine and also brought down a little by the alcohol, so your body can't figure out what you are. Exactly. And which has kind of basically been a, a feeling for me throughout my entire life. Like, my, my body's in between release patterns. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it's it's a vicious cycle. Like, last night is, you know, I was able to, I was able to at least get you know seven hours of sleep. I mean, that's completely respectable. But the night before might have been three or four, and I, I'm I'm playing catch up. As a radio host, is this the worst time of the year from you from asleep and just having to figure out what's going on? Because you're in a market that obviously is pretty basketball obsessed. You've got the NBA playoffs tipping off at God knows what hours. I mean, at least at least with football, it's on the weekend. Ooh, that is a good question. Is this the worst time of the year? Because you're also trying to sneak a lot of golf in. Yeah. Um, ooh, I I guess you got to say yes because yeah, I I think it is because there's nothing worse than like last night. Last night I'm sitting there. I went and played. Um, Congrats to my younger brother, graduated magna cum laude uh, from the University of Alabama. Uh, he's 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 uh, in that wonderful period that so many 22-year-olds find themselves where uh, they want a job, but it takes forever. Um, so he and I played after I got done with the show, and the whole time I'm just sitting there thinking, why can't this Golden State-Houston game tip off at, at 8? Like, yeah. I know why they don't. I know why they do it. They want the exclusivity. They want each game. But I'm sitting there just going, "I this is going to be miserable." Like I know I'm going to stay up and watch the whole thing. And I, full credit. I mean, the game delivered. It, it 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 delivered in terms of interest, um, and whatnot. But God, those those nine thirty tips. It's like, brutal. I wanted to watch it, but I I just I knew there was no way. So I never even watched the opening tip. Just. Convince me this, like, it's been an adjustment, like, turning 30, and I'm not complaining, oh, I'm old, but it's the it's the adjustment of where you can't do what you're used to do, used to doing. Just tell me, like, it doesn't get a ton worse. See, like, I, I'm, I'm scaring you here, because I, I think I wrote this in a text a couple weeks ago, and you, you called it immediately, and I've only got a few months of this, I mean, it was December, I've noticed even in the last six months, 35 being much harder than 30. I, I noticed no difference at all at 30, but 35 kind of popped me a little bit. Here's what I'm hoping it is with you. Like, you're just now more exhausted because your kid is doing more things, and now you're spread more thin. Okay. I'm talking about in terms of the physical, like, the best way I can put it is I can have – two beers, two glasses of wine, whatever, two cocktails, and next day feel hungover. Whereas I used to just, if I had that, I would just be like, oh, yeah, I didn't drink last night. But you're also the same guy that hurt himself sleeping. Yes, no, there's no question. I, there's no question there are there's several issues at hand here. But really what it is for me that is alarming is it's the uh, Sunday at Music Fest. I, you know what I mean? Like I'm having to tap out like, and I'm, it's not tapping out because it's not tapping out because, oh, I've had too much to drink. I didn't even drink Sunday at music fest. It's tapping out because I'm, my feet hurt and I'm just so tired and I just feel old. What's 40 like 45? What are we, what, what, what are we looking at? I, I have no idea. I mean, I don't, I don't recall. I don't. I'm in the minority here. I'm 49. and But your body's in so much better shape at 47 or 49 or whatever you are yeah. than it was at 35. So in yeah, a lot no of ways, doubt. you've kind of gone backwards just because, you, shit, you're 70 pounds lighter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get Aren't up and go exercise, and, and I don't know. But I, the difference is like – What would you like, weigh at 30? Uh, 30. What did I weigh? Probably about 230. 
So about what, 10, 15 pounds more than what you average right now? Um, not to be braggadocious at all, but I weighed yesterday at 210. Yeah, so and so, I mean, like, I mean I'm, know, I'm mean, trying like to get down. Year, I, but you were two thirty three months now. ago. I was two thirty three the day of the uh, Ole Miss Oklahoma NCAA tournament game. Okay. That was the day that I, I realized that it was depressing me, and so my goal is one ninety five, and I'm well on my way to get there. I've I've I, I think I may have finally figured this out. Yeah, I it's I don't know. It's just. It's wildly depressing, and and I guess maybe everyone's body's not the, not the same. Um, Although ten years ago, Jeffrey weighed like one seventeen. So, uh, let's see, thirty twenty. Uh, I don't think one seventeen's a stretch, but probably one twenty five. <laughs> I mean, I did look like a terminally ill patient. My thing is, and, and I know this is going to make me sound like the antisocial person that I can be, but like the, the deal in Memphis with, with the massive crowds and stuff, that kind of thing, even if I'm honest with myself, if I look back on it all the way back to high school and college, that kind of thing never interested me at all. In fact, I always, I would get to something like that. And all I could think about was when do I get to leave? It wasn't bad till Sunday, it, Sunday. I mean, Saturday, Friday and Saturday, Friday and Saturday. Like, yes, it, it's, there were, there were like the biggest crowds were honestly the like I went we just we chose the wrong gate to go into and there was just a massive line to get in. Had we chosen the other two gates, it'd been fine. But Sunday Sunday was another that was another problem. Like the crowds really weren't that bad, and I enjoy the music. Like I enjoy the live music, and so I do like understand. Like I can conceptualize what not. Sunday, the crowds were too much. Like, Sunday, even I'm sitting there going, like, this is not worth it. Okay. Who headlined this thing? Friday, the headliners were Dave Matthews Band. I'm trying to remember Friday. Friday was, like, Dave Matthews Band, Shine Down. I can't remember what the, the rap uh, the rap one was. Saturday, the headliners were terrible. It's like One Republic, uh, like One Republic, Charlie Wilson. Like it was a bunch of like, huh? What they they spent money on them? Uh, and then Sunday was Cardi B and the Killers. Quick shout out to Cardi B. Showed up forty minutes late. Uh, was supposed to, I believe, they're like. Headliners, I believe, are supposed to play at least 90 minutes. She played for 40 minutes and then uh, ditched town. Oh, good. What is What does Dave get for a gig these days, you think? So this was a, a big topic of conversation. I went and tried to get some, uh, some insider info. I did some good, solid reporting. Okay. The best that we can tell is, at the minimum, he got 500. The band got 500. Still today? Yeah. So yeah. In, his, in his height, what were we talking about? I'm fascinated uh, by I this think, kind of stuff. I think a million a show. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, he's still an expensive touring act because he just doesn't play that. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't, they're not, when I say touring act, he's an expensive show act. Like, because he's not going on massive tours anymore. Um, I don't know. I, I struggled with their performance because it's a festival. I understand, like, if you're playing. If you're doing your typical, you know, if you're Dave and you're doing your typical, hey man, we're inviting everyone out to the farm out in Charlottesville. It's my, it's my fans, and you know, we're just gonna jam for two hours. Like, I just feel like at festival shows, you gotta play every hit. Like that's just kind of play that's the kind hits. of the gig. It's, it's what Garth does so well when he does these little yep. last concert things. I'm, just, I'm gonna give agree. you what you want. Completely agree. He played one – I remember seeing him in New Orleans, and he played one new song, and he apologized for it. <laughs> You're here for the cheeseburgers. Here come the cheeseburgers. And this is what I struggle with, with DMB. They are – like, to me, like, you, you can't question their musicianship. Every, every single person on that stage playing an instrument is the 1% of the 1% of, of, of musicians that play that instrument. And you see it, and everything is tight in terms of how good they are at playing. 
But man, I just feel like when you turn a four minute song into 12, like, can we not maybe set the cap at seven, at eight? Because I tried to count the set list. I think he played 13 total songs, maybe 14, and two of which were covers. Like, I'm sorry. I, I understand some people think it's great. I don't need to hear Dave Matthews play Sledgehammer. Like, I didn't think it was that great when Peter Gabriel played it. Like, I don't need that. I want to hear Crash Into Me. Like, call me a little sorority girl. I, I don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, gosh. <sighs> so do you think Kevin Durant tore his Achilles last night? I'll tell you what I don't think. I don't think it was a right calf strain. Even a right calf strain kills him for the series, though, right? Depends that on the grade. Seven days, I think, right? Well, He's if had it's a, a calf strain earlier this year, it, it's anywhere from seven to ten days on one extreme to four to six weeks on the other. Depends on the severity of the of the strain, because as we all know, strain is just code word for tear. Correct. Because yes, it, I don't know. To me, I understand Vince McMahon owns my brain and basically has since I was about nine years old. But I was alarmed by the number of people that bought hook, line, and sinker a team-issued PR statement when a guy clearly had a non-contact injury in which he reacted like somebody shot him. Yeah. I've seen the replays, and had I been watching live, I would have said he just tore his Achilles. Well, in fairness, that's what Reggie Miller said live. Um, oh, did he really? That, oh, yeah, he goes, oh, that's what Kobe did. Oh. Like, that was, like, his initial reaction. Yeah, because Kobe, st if you remember, Kobe stayed on the floor and shot his free throws. Well, yeah, he had to get, come on, man. <laughs> he had to get some points. My point is, is that sometimes the assumption is that an Achilles is that you drop like you've been shot. It, it's immediate pain, and then it actually goes away. And then whatever. Yeah. But yeah, you actually have like a, a an immediate burst, and then it kind of chills. Take a break in our talk with Jeffrey to tell you about Master Cuts Lawn and Landscape. You know, they offer basic maintenance. I've been telling you about the hydrangeas and daylilies growing in front of my office window, but they offer much more than that as well throughout northern Mississippi. That includes building custom playgrounds, retaining walls, pool decks, outdoor living spaces, paver patios, forestry mulching, and much more. The path to your dream backyard, easier than you think. Go mastercuts.com for a free quote, or you get that same free quote by giving them a call at 662-607-7773. Again, that's gomastercuts.com. The podcast is also brought to you by Oxford University Bank, OUB, locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. When you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. OUB gives you the comfort of home and all the benefits that the big mega banks provide you, all the technology and products you can want, all with a personal touch. When you call OUB, you speak directly with the live person. No 10 buttons to push. No five-minute wait. What they have is the absolute best cash checking account. It's called Casasa. And with Casasa, OUB will pay customers 2.5% interest on their balances, up to $50,000, and refund ATM fees nationwide. They also have a commercial checking account now paying 1% interest as long as you keep $10,000 in the account. It comes with fully interactive online banking. So to learn more about OUB, check out liveoxfordbankoxford.com or call 662-234-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. Now back to Jeffrey Wright on the Patterson and Earhart Hotline. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. On all these things, I think Chase would agree with me on this. On all these, on all these types of situations, we don't, we don't cast a judgment until we hear what Dr. Chow says. Yeah, absolutely, yes. And my first thing was, and I heard that statement, I go, I don't believe you. And I understand that's probably because I, you know, again, Vince owns my brain. And I'm just trained to think everything is a work. But that did not pass the smell test. I'm sitting there texting with, I've got a couple of buddies that are in coaching. And they all, you know, when, when they saw strained right calf, they all started doing the uh, crying face emoji. Uh, and it, it's, I don't know, man, like, 
that reaction, like when you when you strain something, like that's not the reaction. That's the reaction when something pops. So let's just assume for the sake of this discussion that he's out for the rest of the playoffs. All right. If the Warriors win anyway, isn't yeah. that the ultimate indictment of Kevin Durant? Or is it the ultimate indictment of what the league has become in this Warrior Super Team era? Can it be both? Yeah, I don't know if they're mutually exclusive. I don't know. See if you agreed with this take. There was someone on Twitter. I don't I don't remember if Matt Moore said it from the Action Network or if maybe Matt Moore was quote tweeting someone or maybe I'm just there was uh, Twitter was running together last night. Uh, the point was that the Warriors ceiling without KD feels higher because if Steph is at the the Steph elite level, there's not much you can do with them, but Durant raises their floor. Basically what he was saying is if they have Durant, the worst case scenario, they win a title, but they might maximize what they're capable of without Durant because Steph becomes – Steph becomes the trigger man. Well, I mean, I, I didn't see it, but I've listened to people talk about it, and I've watched the highlights. What What is obvious is in the fourth quarter last night, they went back to being what they were when they were a 73-win team, and that's Curry and Clay, and Draymond Green loses any semblance of rationality and just turns into this nut job, but I think they feed off that emotion. I think I think Draymond being the asshole helps them. And then they 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 get bigger roles for Andre Iguodala for some of the other guys. That it, it's still an elite basketball team in so many ways. But we're just going to leave Jonas Jerebko out of this. Yeah, and, and then they. But that's what they do. They get guys like Jerebko, like it used to be Harrison Barnes, um, Andrew Bogut. They get guys to step up because there's this void, and all you're asked to do is give me something, and they get it. Uh, Livingston and all those guys. They've always had those guys step up and just give them a little something. In so many ways, when Durant left Oklahoma City for Golden State, we got cheated out of a couple of storylines. We got cheated out of, hey, man, how good are the Warriors? Because when Durant went there, as we've seen, it's just, well, they're the default champs now, which is not the same in the in the, in the eyes of reputation building as earning a championship like if Kevin Durant had stayed in Oklahoma City and that team had gotten over the hump a year later that would have been one of the more celebrated titles in basketball history instead he won in Golden State and everybody's like well yeah of course duh and now if but if Golden State had that next season overcome the thunder or whoever would have had Durant gotten back to the championship and beaten LeBron to sort of avenge that loss, that also would have been one of the most vindicated championships in in NBA history and sports history. We got cheated out of a lot of storylines when Kevin Durant went to Golden State. And I'll say this, and I told you this before we started, if the Achilles is torn, there's nobody in NBA history, with the possible exception of Dominique Wilkins, who has ever come back from an Achilles injury and been anywhere close to the same player, and it really makes the people in Kevin Durant's life who advised him, hey, man, take less money to play on this Warriors team so that we can party in San Francisco, he ought to fire every one of them. Yeah, I I tweeted that out last night that uh, I just Googled players that came back from an Achilles injury. It's not good. It's it's, it's not good. basically I mean, no one. I do think I do think Dominique is probably the best example. One of my buddies asked me, he goes, well, "What about Tiger?" And I go, "Well, Tiger doesn't really count. Like his sport is not predicated on him running full speed, changing directions, jumping, like, leaping." Yeah, I mean, Tiger's yeah. absolutely a testament to to hard work and and modern medicine and all of that. But there is. And this is not to, to take outside anything of, away of, from of, golf. Outside the lines, modern medicine, yeah. Yeah, it's not taking anything away from golf, but but it's a totally different sport than than trying to be an, an NBA. on the ground. Yeah, a six foot eleven guy that's got a leap. Yes, and I, I, I'm not diminishing golf. Everyone knows my feelings on golf, but I, I just don't – I don't think Tiger would have had 
I don't think Tiger would have been able to run at the same speed before and after the Achilles. Well, with the exception of, of going between holes in, in Augusta, there's no chance of someone colliding with him mid, you know, mid stride or whatever, and ha- him having to change directions and such. Now I realize at Augusta with the uh, the over the top security that that sometimes happens and you're challenged, but for the most part, when you line up to hit the ball, you're, you're there's not going to be anybody obstructing you. It's it's just you and the club and the ball. Yeah, I, I don't like. It's just I don't know. I I again, I'm a little concerned. I thought. Actually, though, it makes perfect sense. NBA Twitter is like, they're basically just puppets. So it made perfect sense that they go, oh, Team PR statement. Yeah, I believe it. If he's out for the series, if he's out for the season, the Warriors still win the title? Is it weird to think that I, is it weird that I think Toronto is a worse matchup for Milwaukee right now than Golden State? I'm saying without Kevin Durant. You're saying that you I think that, Milwaukee would have a tougher time with Toronto from a matchup perspective than Golden State right now. Yeah. Because uh Mark Gasol is an elite defender, as Joel Embiid can say. And Mark Gasol is going to be able to give uh Giannis Antetokounmpo some fits. I don't know who on Golden State, especially if Durant is out. I don't know who guards Giannis. I also wonder if last night for Golden State, I understand, I don't know, like to me, like I wonder if that was like that, you know, Custard's last stand where you, they give up this huge lead, they heroically make the comeback. Um, they, but at the, at the end, they're going to have to go play two straight games without Kevin Durant. And yeah, they're going to lose game six in Houston without him. There's just no way they go down there and win that game. And then a game seven. But I'll, I'll, it's also it's it's kind of going to be a litmus test for James Harden a little bit. And Harden's awesome. He won the MVP last year. I don't think he'll win it this year, but you could absolutely vote for him. And, and, and we could do the whole, God, Oklahoma City screwed up, and they did, and all of that stuff. But Harden's got to win one of these games at some point, doesn't he? I agree. Chris Paul has the yips, though, by the way. That's been fun to watch. Like, Chris Paul, you know how you know how uh, Ben Simmons can't pull the trigger? That's Chris Paul right now. And it's breathtaking and so much fun to watch. Well, you know God, this I've being a Grizzlies it. fan. Chris Paul has had some series in his past where Russell Westbrook kicked his ass, where Mike Conley kicked his ass. I mean, Chris Paul's never been Mr. Clutch. He's a great player. He's a Hall of Fame player. But he's never been a great postseason clutch player. He's gotten beaten in some series where his team probably should have won. I completely agree with you. Um, didn't they? They had a 3-1 lead, too. Was the was it the semis? I think they had a 3-1 lead against the Rockets, maybe. Yeah, against the Rockets it. and lost. Um. Yeah, I, I do agree with your your overall point though. Like last night felt like a game you had to win. I'm not gonna go. One thing that I do love about the NBA now is the NBA has really adopted football mentality in that every game is a referendum or an indictment yeah. on someone's career and yeah. whatnot. And for me, it's just so much fun because God, the overreactions are just amazing. Yeah, Joel Embiid is toast now. His career is over, even though he's done. Tw- he's 24. Over. Ben Simmons is the biggest disappointment of a number one pick that we've seen ever. Um, Brad Stevens I, I, can't I, coach anymore. Brad Stevens can't coach. Um, yeah, like Kyrie can't but, shoot. Yeah, Kyrie's. A, I like Kyrie's a team killer better. He's a cancer. I'm a bigger fan of that one. Um, I think maybe because I kind of believe that one. Yeah, I mean, in general, yes, Harden. If 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 the standard is going to be, you know, is Harden chasing, you know, becoming, you know, I don't know, all-time greats might be a stretch. But, like, if, if he wants to be one of the best players of his generation, yeah, I think he's got to – I think he has to carry a team. And, you know – He does. He's got to go win one of these big games. 
He yeah. can't keep losing these games. I mean, if you want to do the Harden Thunder thing that a lot of people love to do, okay, great. Go back to 2012 and watch James Harden in the finals. Truth is, yeah. he was too damn hung over sure. to play. And now, they, as they fairness, get— fairness, though, I mean, that was mean to put the finals in Miami. It was. He plays better if it was on a neutral floor. He would have played better on a neutral floor. There's no doubt. But look, but look seriously, about the, he's a great player. He's maybe the second best offensive player in a generation. And I'm talking about Kevin Durant's generation, not Jordan's. But he's got to win one of these series. He's got to win one of these big games at some point to get over that hump. We're, we're not just saying, hey, he's kind of like Dominique Wilkins. Yeah, I mean, I agree. And if you can't do it this time, you're going to get – you got you got to win two games, one at home, one on the road, and – they don't have their best player. I, I do got to go, Jeffrey. 90 seconds here. Are we stupid or liar? Tony Romo this week saying that uh, he believes he is getting sponsors exemptions into the Byron Nelson and the PGA Tour events for his actual golf ability. Ooh, Romo feels stupid. Do what? Romo feels like Romo feels like he believes that. S- truly believes that. Yeah, it's more of a Costanza issue. It's like, does he know he's lying? Like, or does he believe? Like, it's not a lie if you believe it, Jerry. Like, yeah. That, I think that's the bigger deal. This is my livelihood, but, Romo told ESPN's Todd Archer. I think it's the same as anything. You have to show you have the ability. You don't just get these ran- randomly. You have to be able to perform at some point in front of somebody who thinks you deserve it. I've been practicing, practicing really hard on it like a tour- touring pro. Same type of schedule. Mornings, get up, routine, just like you're playing football. I always I understand you only get so many of these, so you got to perform. Hopefully that time is coming. Yeah, I mean, I think he also kind of has to say that. Like, I'm sure at this point the tour has kind of given him talking points. But let's also not rule out he's going with the Happy Gilmore putting stance. Like, he's got like, like – literally he's putting it like a hockey stick right now. So we can't really rule out that that's not the difference between him, you know, him missing the cut at Punta Cana and finishing DFL versus, you know, making a run at this thing. Okay. You have t- 20 more seconds? Because I, I did not yeah, know this good. until just then. James Harden's shot chart over the final eight minutes and 30 seconds last night. With I, think Dur- took, I think he took two shots. He took two shots both at the goal. What the yeah. hell? I don't know. It was weird. And, like, it wasn't just that, like the way that the camera, you know, like when the camera focuses in the half court and they kind of tighten in the shot to where it's basically from the hash mark to the inbound. There were times where Harden wasn't even in the picture, literally. It was, it was mind blowing. That's what, that's what I hate. I hate about NBA media. If that's Russell Westbrook, if that's just 10 other people, they are crucified today. Oh, there's no question. That's kind of the deal with the NBA. Like, Can you, know, you imagine if LeBron did that? The NBA is really similar to, like, the, uh, the, the fraternity of the elite sports columnists. Like, oh. you, know, you know what I mean? Oh, like they kind of, yes, I do. They kind of protect their own, and they promote their own. But God forbid you be outside of that. God forbid, you know, you really have a cause you believe in, like James Harden does with single mothers, and, and your jersey's hanging in the rafters of a strip club in Houston. <laughs> God forbid you be, God forbid you be a little out of bounds. <laughs> but it's like once they decide that you're not one of them, like. Oh, it's it's why I sometimes defend the Thunder on the Harden thing. On its basketball surface, was it a horrible? Uh, trade absolutely was there a lot more to that story that if national media would have done their job would have provided context yes yeah i mean that's i mean that's kind of our business that, that that's basically our business in a sentence yeah. appreciate we're it, big on we're not big on legwork we're big though on uh self-righteousness yes and insisting upon ourselves Good luck today. All right, guys. Thanks to Jeffrey and David today for uh, joining the show. Thanks to, thanks to Campbell for coming down and uh, answering that mystery that we've had about counties in Mississippi. Yeah, it's uh, 
been an eventful one. We'll close it out tomorrow. We have a uh, an interview already in the can with Matt Wyatt, radio uh, radio host, and uh, and more focusing on Mississippi State. So we'll talk to him tomorrow. And, I've had uh, some time to think about this, by the way. Um, yeah, I've I've decided that you and Jeffrey whining about your thirties uh-huh. is the uh, crap take of the day. Oh, I, it, it is. It, I, I've thought about it. I didn't want to pin that on you because I like both of you uh, a lot. But no. It, it, Sometimes in life, there have to be ramifications for just ridiculous things. So, him, really more him complaining about turning 30. Just 35 is harder than 30. It is. I, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That's, whoa, goodness what gracious. Is what is that? It's kind of a long story. I is that a phone? It's a phone. I have a, a, a. It's basically a burner phone that I never use. It what? was. It was. Why do you have a burner phone? It was provided to me free of charge, and sometimes I will use it. Look, those were supposed to be put in bags and collected and sent to Indianapolis. I mean, God, God no. Sometimes I will take that phone and I will use it to call a. See, you you were in Chicago. You weren't here. They collected all those that night immediately. When I'm leaving the baseball field, I see the Manning Center lights on, and I go, I wonder what's going on over there. A couple of days later, I find out. I use it to call teleconferences so that I can use the recorder device on my other phone to record the teleconference. There are so many issues with that statement that we don't have time Believe to explain. That there are 25 other ways to do that. I know, but that one works for me, and then I have the file for good. You don't think there's other ways to get the file for good? There are other ways. But that's the efficient way. <laughs> you do realize I make a lot of phone calls from my computer and record them, right? I do, but I'm, I'm waiting. It's it's so much easier to then put my headphones into this phone, pull the file up, and transcribe it where I have control over it. Okay. Go ahead. Because some people in the media like to get quotes accurate. Some it, people. It really doesn't matter anymore. It's fine. It, it's well. <laughs> there's so much proof of that. Anyway, uh, Jeffrey's complaining about turning 30 is the crap take of the day. It's brought to you by Scoopers Pet Waste Removal LLC. Everyone loves their pets, but no one loves stepping into their pet stuff. Tracking that stuff into your house is a nightmare, as we all probably know. Scoopers will go into your backyard, apartment complex, or condominium and pick up what no one really wants to pick up. For ten dollars of cleaning, Scoopers will clean up your yard. They'll do it on your schedule, whether that's weekly, bi-weekly, or a one-time service. No contracts are required, and you can cancel at any time. If you have multiple dogs, it's just $2 for each additional dog. So if you own a home, a condo, or an apartment complex in Oxford, and you'd like to deal with a lot less crap, call Scoopers, 662-506-2754, or simply send them an email at scoopers.oxfordpetwaste.com at gmail.com to get your cleanings scheduled today. Scoopers Pet Waste Removal, they're number one and your pet's number two business. So Matt, tomorrow, again, Ole Miss and Mississippi State, probably won't play a game tomorrow night, so we'll have coverage of that at rebelgrove.com and we'll uh, talk to you tomorrow.